What's going on everyone? My name is Hunter and welcome to a brand new Svelkit video. In today's video, we're gonna be learning how to progressively enhance our form interactions in Svelkit using the enhance action. As always, if you'd like to follow along, there will be links to the GitHub repository in the description down below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and start by looking at our example application that we'll be working with today. So as you can see here, we have this simple yet sufficient application, a little note taking application here. We can create new notes. We can say note one, we can type some content here. It'll create a note. And then we also have a little bit of validation set up. So if we omit the title and we just type content in, we're going to get an alert back here that gets rendered saying that the title must not be empty. We can also delete notes by just clicking this X here and everything works as expected. But you can tell that we're using just form actions here because the URL is changing on every request. If we create another note here, you can see that the entire page reloaded, right? So how do we progressively enhance this form to give a better user experience to those users that are running with modern web browsers that have JavaScript? How can we do that? What can we do? Let's go ahead and check out the code to figure out what we're starting out with. So I've already covered form actions in another video. So if form actions or what I'm doing right now is sounds completely foreign to you, definitely go check that video out first and then come back to this video after the fact, it'll definitely clear some things up. But I prepared some code here and we're not focused on the actions themselves. We're mostly focused on how to actually progressively enhance those forms on the client side, right? But just to give you a little bit of a tour as to what we have going on back here, let me close out of this sidebar. We're currently storing some notes in memory here and we're able to do that because we're running a dev server. So this stays up, you know, until we, ref until we actually save the server and restart it. That's how the notes can persist. We have a load function that returns the notes. We have a few actions, one to create and one to delete the notes. Very, very simple. The validation is happening back here. We're just checking if the data.title.length is less than one, then we're returning invalid and then rendering back an error message here, which we then are able to access if we go to the page.svelte. You can see here, this is a very simple form that we have built out. And this is where we're checking to see if that error message exists. And that's where we're rendering out the alert. So nothing too complex here. Again, the focus is really on progressively enhancing this form and not so much on the form actions themselves. Okay. So as usual, let's go ahead and check out the Svelkit documentation to see what they have to say about progressive enhancement. And we can see that the easiest way to progressively enhance a form is to add the use enhance action. We make this a bit bigger here real quick. And we import enhance from app slash forms, and then we just add it to our form like this, right? And then if we scroll down a bit further, we can see that without an argument, use enhance will emulate the browser native behavior just without the full page reloads. And by emulate the browser native behavior, it means emulating exactly what we're currently doing here. So when we do this, Everything that happens here, it's going to emulate without the page reload. Okay. So it's going to update our form property, the page.form store, page.status on a successful or invalid response, but only if the action is on the same page you're submitting from. This is going to be important later. We're going to talk about this. Reset the form element and invalidate all data using the invalidate all on a successful response. Call go to on a redirect response and render the nearest error boundary if an error occurs. And we'll talk about customizing this behavior in just a second. So essentially, all that's going to do is emulate exactly what we're doing currently, just without a full page reload. So let's go ahead and check this out, see how this looks. So to do that, all we have to do is come into our forms here and we could say use enhance and then import that. We'll do the same thing for our delete form. And then I'm just going to refresh this page here and let me just type in a note. So pay close attention to the URL as well as the browser tab where it would show that the page is reloading. So if I add another note, so that looked pretty clean, right? Pretty instant, no loading required. And that's what we would expect, right? Because that's what it says it does emulating the browser native behavior without the full page reload. And that's the simplest form of implementing progressive enhancement, right? But there's a lot more that we can do with this. So let's say that since we're currently validating that the title is not blank, right? So the title at length is greater than one on the server side. Let's go ahead and do that on the client side, right? It would make more sense that if we can validate on the client side, we don't have to waste a request to the server, right? I'm not saying that you should replace your server side validation with only client side validation, but in addition to, it's definitely something nice to have here. So let's figure out how we can do that. Let's figure out how we can check title on the client side and then not actually send a request to the server if there is no title. And this means that we're going to have to customize that behavior. So let's go back to the docs here and see what they have to say about customizing that behavior. So if we scroll down a bit further to customize the behavior, we can provide our own function that runs immediately before the form is submitted and optionally returns a callback that runs with the action result. And we can open this up and look at this in just a second. And it says, note that if you return a callback, the default behavior mentioned above is not triggered. To get it back, call update. So this behavior here is not triggered if we return our own custom callback, right? By default. 
So if we take a closer look here, we're going to see that this use enhance function takes in form, data, action, and cancel. And then the callback has result and update. So let's actually just look at these live so we can get a better feel for how this works and then what we can do with this, okay? So let's move this back out of the way here. And rather than placing my submit functions here, like this, where you would normally go, you know, here we could take in form and then all that. What I like to do is I like to define it up here inside of the script tag and then pass it in there. It just makes things a little cleaner for me and more organized. So what I like to do is I'll just say uh, const submit create note, and that's going to take in a form. It's also going to take in data. We also have access to the action as well as cancel. And we'll look at each of these individually in just a second. And then it can optionally return a callback. So we can say return async. We can say result and update. And then if you're using TypeScript, this is actually typed as a submit function. If not, do not worry about that at all. Okay, so for now, we're actually gonna skip out on the return async piece. Okay, we're gonna comment that out for now, just so we have it there. And let's first take a look at form, data, and action. So if we console log form, and then we'll do the same thing for data and action. And then we come down here to our use enhance, and we pass this in. So submit, create note, just like so. And now let's go ahead back to our application, and let's submit a new note. And we'll need to open up our console here because of the fact that these console logs are going to be run on the client side, right? So let's go ahead and create a new note. So we'll say new note. And we see here that we have a few things that are being logged to our console. The first one is a form. And as soon as we hover over it, you're immediately going to see that this is literally our HTML form element here, right? So you have access to this form that you can manipulate, do whatever you'd like with inside of this function, right? We also have data, which is our form data. And we'll, we'll be working with this in just a second. And then we have an action, which is a URL object that contains information about the action itself. So I'm sure you can already tell some in, some useful things that you could do with this. You could check to see where the query string is headed to and then take a different action dependent upon that. There's a lot that can be done here. You can pretty much rebuild your form actions if you'd like to within this function, given all the information that you have here. So now you may be wondering, okay, what about cancel? What does cancel do? So cancel will just cancel the form from being submitted. And we can verify this by, we'll just delete all of those here for now. We'll go back into our page.server. And then what we'll do is we'll console log here on the create. We'll say hit action. And this is just going to let us know that, hey, we have in fact hit this action here. The form was not canceled. And we'll see this console logs in our actual server console here. So let's just simply run cancel here. And now when I go to add a new note, we can see that nothing happens, right? Nothing's being logged here. Nothing's changing. The form's not submitting, right? It's literally preventing the form from being submitted. Cool. So we can definitely use that. And I can already think of one, one way that we can use that, right? What about for validation, right? So if we have a validation failure, we don't want to submit the form to our server. We just want to display some type of notification here on the client side. So what we can do is we can actually get the form data. So we can just say const and we can take out the title and content, which are the two form fields. We can say object dot from entries data. So now we have access to the title and the content that were submitted in the form. And we can pretty much run the same validation that we were running on the server side. So we can say if title.length is less than one, then what do we want to do? Well, we definitely don't want to submit the form, right? So we can say cancel and we can just do this for now, right? So let's try to submit a form with an actual title. We'll see that we did in fact hit the action here and the note was created. But let's say that we leave the title blank and just type some content here. Now when we click add, nothing is happening, right? So that's nice and all, but it's not too, too cool. You know, there's no real feedback here for the user. So I've actually added a toast library called Svelte French Toast. And we can see here, it's a very, very simple library that I installed. It's already included in your package.json. If you clone the repo, I already have the toaster set up inside of the layout. But what we can do is we can import toast and call toast.success or toast.error to, you know, show a nice little toast notification here inside of our application. So let's go ahead and do that. So if the title.length is less than one, we, we want to cancel the submission, but we actually want to give the user some feedback as to why their form was not submitted. So we can import toast up here. And then we'll come down here and we'll say toast.error. And we'll simply say title cannot be blank. So now let's check out what happens when we try to submit with a blank title. We get a nice notification here saying title cannot be blank. This isn't really possible, you know, using just regular form actions without progressively enhancing this form. So these are the kind of cool things that we can do by learning about this stuff.
Okay, so now let's say we want to show a nice notification when they actually created a post, right? We'll, we'll have a success and we'll say post or note created, right? Uh, so what we can do is we can uncomment this and remember result is action data, okay? So if we go and look at that type that we brought up here earlier, we can see that action results, I apologize, I said action data, I meant action results. So when calling a form action data fetch, the response will be one of these shapes. So we, we can see here that all of them have a type, right? Type success means that the form was successfully submitted. Invalid is what what is the type whenever we return invalid on the server side. So if you look here, we are returning invalid here. So the type over here of result would be invalid. If we throw a redirect, the type will be redirect. And if we throw an error, of course, the type will be error, right? And we can see that we have a few more things here. We have the location for redirect so that Svelte knows where to send the user to. So let's see how we can actually start to use some of this information to further progressively enhance our form. So what we'll do here is we're gonna set up a switch statement and I'm gonna switch based on result.type, right? Because we know it's gonna be one of those four. And the first one is gonna be case of success. So if the form was submitted successfully with no issues, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say toast.success and I'm going to say note added. And then I'll break and then I'll just do a default as break and then we'll, we'll just end it with this for the time being. We're not gonna touch update yet. I'm gonna show you what that does, okay? So let's go back to our application and let's add a new note. As you can see, when I click add, the data is still here in the form, right? That's a little bit weird, isn't it? That shouldn't be there. If we look back to the documentation, we can see that if we return a callback, the default behavior mentioned above is not triggered. One of those being resetting the form and invalidating all data, right? So we don't have our new note here yet and the form wasn't reset. And it says that in order to get that back, we need to call update. So let's call update and see what happens. So what we can do is we can just say await update underneath of a switch statement for now. And then if we refresh this page, we're going to have that note there. So now we're pretty much starting fresh. Okay. So we're going to add another note. When we click add, we can see that now the form was reset. The note was added and we had that nice toast notification pop up for us, letting us know that our note was created. Okay. So that's what update is doing. Now let's pretend like we're editing a note, right? So let's pretend like whatever content we have in here, whenever we click this add button, or pretend like it says edit or update, we don't want the content to disappear. We don't want the form to reset, but we still want all the other things to happen behind the scenes. The update does, right? Which is again, all of these things here. So how can we do that? Well, it's pretty simple, okay? So what we would do is, let's just pretend for now that we are editing this, this note. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say update. I'm gonna say reset is false. And what that will do is that will prevent the form from resetting when we actually submit a successful response or a successful request. So we can type in title here. We can say, hello, another notes, add. So you can start to see here that we could add a bunch of these now, right? And obviously if you're actually editing the editing something, then, you know, it wouldn't be creating a bunch of these, right? It would just be editing that. But that way you can keep your fields populated, your inputs populated with the data and still have all the other things happen behind the scenes. So that's how you do that. Okay. So for now, we'll take this back out and let me just restart my server here so that we get a fresh start. And now let's just say that we didn't want to do validation here. Let's just say, okay, the server's going to handle it all. I don't really care, but you still want to show a nice toast notification that the data is invalid. What we can do is we can set up another case. We can say case invalid. We can say toast.error. And again, you'll be able to get this information from the form or whatever, however you're passing your error messages back to your client. That's how you can get this information here. It really just depends on how you want to do it. I have videos on form validation, which talk about that as well as the form actions video. But for now, we'll just type in a generic message. It says, we already know what the invalidation error is going to be. So we'll just say title cannot be blank. And then we'll break. So because we're returning invalid here, right? It's going to, the result.type is going to be invalid, meaning it should trigger this and not this. So let's check that out. So I'm going to leave title blank and I'm just going to type something random into content. And now you can see that I get both the alert here and the toast, which is probably not ideal. Again, this alert here is, is just to make things short and simple. You may want to actually just have, you know, some nice form validation here that actually tells them that, you know, underneath the title that it cannot be empty. And then you can also pop up a toast saying that they failed to add a note, whatever, right? That's how you would handle that. So that's how you can take action based on an invalid response that we get back here from our form. And one thing I want to mention before we move forward is that 
this await update does not need to be called outside of the switch. So in a certain situation, right, we may just want, we may want success to not reset the form, right? So we could do this here and we could say reset equals false or reset to false. And then for invalid though, we do want that to be reset. For example, we can do this here as well. But again, if they're all gonna be the same, then you could obviously just move this down here. Okay. Now, one of the last things that I wanted to touch on is apply action and where that comes into play, right? So if we check out the documentation, we can see that we may need to reproduce part of the default use enhanced behavior, such as showing the nearest error boundary. Most of the time calling update past the callback is enough. If we need more customization, we can do so with apply action. And if we can scroll down a bit, we can see how it's actually used. We just await apply action and we pass in that result. Apply action comes from app slash forms, just like enhance. Okay. And then it gives us the behavior of apply action result. And it's always going to depend on the result.type. So success or invalid essentially sets the form and page.form to result.data. And then it sets the page.status to result.status. And this does not matter where you're submitting the form from. So if you recall up here in this area here, we can see that only if the action is on the same page you're submitting the form from. And this is what update does, right? Update does all this, this default behavior. So apply action is, let's say that we have an act, a form action on a page that we're sharing between multiple forms, multiple forms and multiple different pages are all hitting the same action, right? Well, if we're going to progressively enhance those, we want to apply action result rather than update. Okay. And we can check out the behavior up, update. If we come into our application again, and then we change update to await apply action result. Okay. So let's see what this does now. So if we type in a new note, we can see that the form was not reset. Okay. So if you're doing this on a form that does need to be reset after a successful apply action, all you have to do is we have to call form.reset. And really it would probably be best to do this here up top, right? Or inside of the success. So right here we would say form.reset and then we can await apply action result. And then what we also have to do, sorry about that. I misspelled that apply action result. And then if you notice that note did not get added to our page, right? And that's because we need to actually invalidate all. So that's something else that apply action does not do. So if we look here at the documentation again, we don't see invalidate all anywhere. However, update does call invalidate all, which is what is going to re-trigger our load functions to run, thus giving us that updated notes data. Okay. So let's check this out. Now that we have a wait and validate all we have the form reset and the apply action. So now let's just try to add a new note here. So hello, this is a new note. Now, when I click add, now we can see that we do in fact get our notes back. I can do another one here and we can see that it works the same. Really the nice thing about update is that it covers all three of these for you, right? It also gives you the flexibility of choosing to reset your form or not, and is a little bit easier to use if the action is on the same page. In our case, it is here. So we do not need that, but that is how you would do that. That is how apply action works. Okay. So I think that's going to conclude today's video. If you learned something today about progressive enhancement or about form actions, I would greatly appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. If you have further questions, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below, or you can join our discord. We have about 200 members now and we're growing every day. Everyone's always willing to lend a helping hand to help others. It's a fantastic community. Also, I stream pretty regularly here on this channel on YouTube, as well as on Twitch. Feel free to tune into my channel evening time EST. I try to stream projects, building projects with uh, Svelkit. They're live, they're raw, they're unscripted, they're me learning. So if that's something that would be interesting to you, please stop by, say hi. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.